Welcome to Law Rulers, how to streamline your client intake process. My name is Scott Clayson. I will be your host here for the next, I don't know, 45 minutes or so uh, as we walk through why and how the client intake process is so important for a law firm. And more importantly, and why you're here today, how to streamline that to make it uh, as efficient as possible. I do have a, a guest with me here from Law Ruler who I'll introduce in a couple of minutes and um, we'll, we'll get into uh, our agenda. So a couple of uh, housekeeping items. Uh, everyone who is attending here is, is on mute. Um, I do, there, you should see, I think it's at the bottom of your screen, a Q&A icon. Um, feel free to ask any questions that come up over the course of the webinar. Um, we may not get to them immediately, the, the question, but I guarantee we'll, we'll get to it um, before the end. Uh, and there will be a separate Q&A um, section, the time that we have carved out at the end, that we can go back and forth if there are further questions. We um, reserve the right to not necessarily have the answer <laughs> to your question, uh, and we will be following up this webinar with an email so that uh, with a link, we can watch this at your leisure. And if there is a question that we were unable to answer, we'll be sure that to include that in the email. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started and take a look at our agenda here. We're gonna do some introductions. Who am I? Who's my guest from, from Law Ruler? What are we all about? Uh, Wanna get that out of the way a little bit and then get into the kind of the, the meat of, of why you're here. Um, and that is how we're gonna streamline our intake process. And there's a couple of main learning objectives that we wanna get through. And the, the first one we're gonna lean into is automation and why you wanna rely on automating the process as much as possible when you are working with, um, with new clients uh, and new potential clients. The, the, the second pillar here is the idea that most of the work that you do when it comes to taking in a client um, doesn't stay there and shouldn't stay there. It should move down the pipeline of the various tools that you use to manage the, your workload as a law firm and to manage a case to come to its, um, the, hopefully the, the right outcome that you want for your client. How can you do that from the beginning is something we'll cover in our second objective. And then third, we'll talk about while we want to talk about automation, we want to talk about how to move information down the pipeline. We also want to emphasize the point that you, it, 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 you've heard this term, I'm sure a million times, the KISS theory, you know, keep it simple, stupid. Keeping things simple, actually there's, there's an advantage to that. And we're going to short, sort of show you how that can be done and make this um, not only simple, but a seamless process um, as you are interacting with leads and those leads become new clients and those new clients become right. regular work for you. Okay. So let's, uh, we'll then have that Q and a session for you and then, um, uh, we'll, we'll wrap up things. And then we do have a question we want to ask you at the end. So we should be getting through this in about 45 minutes. I'm willing to bet. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see certainly won't take up the entire hour. I don't think that we had at least carved out on, on your calendar. So let's talk a little bit about, okay, who am I? Uh, my name is Scott Clayson. As I mentioned, I'm the VP of marketing at ProfitSolve. ProfitSolve is the parent company that actually um, uh, owns Law Ruler. I've been in the uh, the legal software field for six years now. Uh, I've spent 20 years off and on in the, uh, the marketing world. I actually really should probably say 25 years. <laughs> I should update that slide as I'm getting older here. I've seen the full um, movement of marketing from the traditional kind of print world of the, you know, pre-internet era to um, full digital marketing. It's been incredibly interesting to, to see that transition. I did used to be a high school history teacher. I um, taught ninth, 10th, and or excuse me, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. Um, history um, for about three years in my mid-career. So I, I do love um, kind of doing these webinars and, and getting into the uh, the teaching end of the world again. And then on a personal note, yes, I, I get absolutely irrationally excited when I go about cooking the perfect 
steak for my family. We are uh, true carnivores here in the Clayson household. Um, my wife and my son like their steak extraordinarily rare, but they still want that nice crust. So anyway, that's probably a whole nother webinar that I need to do specifically around <laughs> cooking a steak. So that's a little bit about who, who I am and where I'm coming from. I wanna introduce to you Brandon Brooks. Um, Brandon, go ahead and say hello and, and tell us a little bit about, about yourself and life at Law Ruler. Hey, how's it going guys? <clears throat> Uh, so my name is Brandon. I'm an account manager at Law Ruler. Um, I specialize in customer satisfaction, sales, and perfecting the client's journeys. I have about 10 plus years of sales experience under my belt, um, transitioning through CarMax, AT&T, and now with Law Ruler. Um, and I myself love baseball and softball. Uh, I get overly excited just how Scott gets with his stake, but with getting onto the softball field and just I love a good challenge. Well, that's good. Brent, thanks for, thanks for joining me here today. Um, he is in South Florida um, right now where Law Ruler's headquartered. I'm actually up in Minneapolis. So the idea of, of being on the softball field currently, as I look out my window, um, seems very foreign to me. I'm sure right. you play softball year round down there, don't you? All year round, even in the rain. That's, oh yeah, even in the rain, poor guy playing in the rain. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just it's like 30 degrees up here right now. That's all. Okay. Oh my God. Yep, I think it's like 60 are. degrees on the on the on the lowest end here. That's right. All right. So enough about about, about us and about um, what we like to do when we're, we're not um, talking the preaching the gospel of, of legal CRM and, and law ruler. A couple of things we want to do here as before we really deep dive into our, our main objectives is kind of do a level set set the foundation of um, you know, where we're coming from and, and first that that comes from the idea of, hey, some of you on this webinar may not exactly know what we mean by when we say legal CRM. So CRM, um, for those of you that don't know, you know, customer relationship management. Um, you may have heard of a tool called Salesforce. Uh, that's kind of the big industry, huge leader of, of how you manage your contacts. Um, but really it's these four steps. Um, and, and, you know, Brandon, I mean, it's, it's pretty, I mean, we, we labeled it here one, two, three, four, but really this is what CRM is meant to do, right? Specifically in the legal space. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to reach more qualified leads, convert them into clients faster and easier, um, make sure the time that it takes to respond to inquiries gets cut. And we wanna make sure that that engagement with those prospects actually goes up, um, even if you don't necessarily have the horsepower to, to do it. And by that, I mean, and Brandon, maybe you can speak to this a little bit. Like, where do you see the value of a of a CRM from a stat from a, a firm that maybe doesn't have? They feel like the staff that can handle it. I always look at tools as like, can I do more with less? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, a hundred percent. And it's something that you can see as simply as you know, if you got a math equation, are you going to sit there and take the time to do out that calculation in your head, or are you going to just simply pull out your calculator and just type in that equation? So this is this relates in, in a sense of how am I going to maintain these clients? How am I going to get a hold of all of these clients that are coming in and wanting to do business with me and not let any of them slip through the cracks? You know, the goal is retention and, and trying to gain as many clients as you can. And that's where the legal CRM comes into function. It allows you to get a hold of that client, keep that client's information, and even set up some type of automation to auto response and get a hold of that client immediately. I think that's well put. Um, the The whole idea, I think, CRM and software like this can really level the playing field from really big companies that can just throw tons of time and resources and money at this type of work. That you know, every law firm needs to do this to some. Well, they have to do it. You always constantly are going to need new business. Um, you're always going to need new clients. You're always going to have people reaching out to you who find you through whatever marketing efforts you have made. And at first blush, it, it may be like, oh my God, how do I handle all of this? I don't have time to engage with all these people who are asking if I'm the right you know, law firm for their business. And you, you, it's, you sort of, it gnaws at you that you know you might be losing clients because you just don't have the time to deal with responding to them. And that's where software can level that playing field. And while you may not have the, all the dedicated resources that a huge massively funded law firm has, tools like what legal CRM is and what law ruler have um, can really level that playing field. 
All right, so specifically around when we're talking legal CRM, one component of that is client intake. So let's define here because the rest of what we're going to talk about here today really revolves around the client intake process. And as you see up here on, on our screen, as, as we define it, this is the onboarding of new clients and acquiring their personal information to get started on the matter you're going to be working for them. So it's kind of where the mark it's where the marketing work that you did ends um, and where the actual like client you know lawyer relationship is is beginning uh, is maybe the best place to, to put that but as I think you'll find when we talk more about this and you know like Brandon there's not really like a definitive line in the sand like well my marketing is done and now I start my client intake it kind of is woven together isn't it yeah, it's, it's an entire workflow. It's something that, you know, it's something that's going to be gelled together and you want it to be the, the easiest and simply the seamless process um, from start to finish. You want it to be easy for your, not only your intake staff, but you want it to be seamless for the client as well. Because the more stress you put on a client, it's it's going to further reduce churn and, and want them to, to seek out other other firms. It's a really good point that you bring up, and we can sort of explore that a little bit, is the idea that sort of by definition, if, if somebody is reaching out, especially if it's an individual, if you practice a type of law that isn't necessarily corporate, you know, dealing with a lot of corporations or, um, you know, oftentimes when people are reaching out to, they, they need legal services, they're in a, already in a stressful frame of mind, right? And making the process of starting to, and for often, again, depending on the type of law you practice, this could be the very first interaction that they may have ever had with a lawyer or a law firm, um, or very rarely have they ever had to interact with, I'm speaking to my own personal experience. I think I've had to seek out legal help maybe like once or twice in my life. So you're already in a weird position where you've never really done this before. So you're out of your comfort zone. So I, I think, you know, Brandon, what I'm hearing from you is like, if you as a law firm can be a warm, welcoming um, presence to that stress, that's gonna really help everything from there on out when, once you engage with that client, right? A hundred percent, you know, the client, they're, they're pretty much distraught. They're going through a series of issues, whether it's a car accident, divorce, uh, family issues, it, it's, it's, all something that's going to create confusion and, and chaos inside of the customer's internal process. So the fact that you um, want to make that the most easiest and seamless process, you're essentially going to be a blanket for that client. You're going to be helping them calm them down and you're going to be making this process an easy process. Because essentially what happens is if you create more internal chaos for that customer, you're going to deter them away. You're going to lose them and they're going to slip through the cracks. Not to mention the fact that you may not be the only law firm that they are seeking out to provide legal services. They might be going, you know, they did a Google search, um, whatever, and they found a couple of firms they're reaching out to. So this first interaction, this first kind of intake process that you are, if you're, you, you know, it's, it's an oldie but a goodie saying, you, you only get one chance for a first impression. So exactly. to make a good first impression. So this is the first time they get to see how you operate. So if you can provide that really efficient, seamless, frictionless way to interact, A, you're more likely to get the business and B, they are, um, you're creating a trust factor with them right out of the gate that will serve itself, you know, pay itself back in spades as you move forward. Um, and that there's two phrases I love to throw around that I think are absolutely true, especially in our quasi post COVID world. And that is the idea of, I mentioned before, frictionless, make things as easy as possible for your clients. And the way to do that is to meet them where they're at. And what that means, it can mean different things for different people, but for most people these days, meeting them where, where they're at means communicating with them in a way that they are comfortable with and used to doing. And so, you know, especially if we're dealing with people in the, the millennial generation, the under 40 crowd, if you will, where they're used to doing things on their mobile devices. They don't do a lot of actual phone calls. They, they do more things with text messaging. Even email is like, you know, eh, you know, email is something my parents do kind of stuff. If you can meet your clients there where they're comfortable and determine where are they most comfortable? Are they, maybe they are, they just want to talk to somebody. They, they want to have that phone conversation 
but maybe it could be like it's it's texting back and forth because they're so used to to, to text messaging as their way they communicate. If you can figure out where to meet them, where they're most comfortable, you're already going to be ahead of the game versus other law firms that are trying to do it kind of the old way, the way it's quote unquote always be done. Because let's be honest, lawyers by definition tend to be, they look backward. And, and it's, yeah, I don't really blame them because that's the way the legal system is. You are trained as a lawyer to look at precedents. What has been done in the past is the way you've been trained as a lawyer to determine how to move forward with the, with the law that you're working on now. And that bleeds over into technology and the way law firms are run. Um, how have, let's look at precedents. How have we done this in the past and how we engage with clients? It's time to get out of that mindset. And forward thinking law firms are the ones who are just eating the lunch of firms who you know, still think that, I don't know, maybe I'm being facetious here. Do they even print the yellow pages anymore? But, you know, they think the yellow pages is the best way to, um, you know, to get a new client. So that is what client intake is, um, as, as in the, the way we'll discuss the rest of, of this webinar. Okay. So let's talk about our, our first pillar here. Oh, actually, before we do that, I do want to get to my, my first poll question. Um, for those of you that uh, are, um, you know, with us today, do you have currently a bulletproof client intake process? You know, yes or no. Um, do you feel like the way that you bring and you the way you interact with prospects who are coming to your law firm and looking to maybe uh, enlist you for legal services and then the way you process them into your system, do you feel like it's bulletproof? Like it is, yeah, yeah, I am, I'm, it, it is, I'm crushing it right now. So I'll, I'll leave it open here um, uh, for people right now. I'm getting a lot of no's. Um, so that's probably why you're here today, right? To learn how to, you know, find that intake process that will um, just, you'll be crushing it. It's bulletproof. All right. Every answer that I've had so far is no, they don't have the, the so it's, it's 100% in the no category. All right, we're gonna have another poll here uh, near the end as well, so stick around. So let's talk about um, automation. You know, that's really gonna be the key here when it comes to doing this right and leveraging the power of a CRM. And this really is the bread and butter. Uh, CRMs are all about automating the way in which you interact with your clients, yet is a, still a very personable way in which you interact with your clients and your prospects. And that revolves around setting up like intake workflows. And I'll explain what that means in just a second. Um, so Brandon, you know, when we say automation when it, for client intake, what, what do we mean exactly? When we talk about automation, we, we want something that's <clears throat> not really human driven. We want something that's going to be quick and easy something that's going to allow you to get a hold of the customer as soon as possible, even if there's no one available to speak to that person. And what I mean by that is, let's say a client calls in and they're just ringing, 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 and all of a sudden they get a voicemail. A client's not going to sit there, leave a voicemail and expect just to wait around and, and have you call them back. They're going down. Like you said, they Googled a list of firms that they want to have help them out. They're going to just go down to the next person. Whereas if we can have an automated system to reach out to that client immediately, let them know that they are going to be reviewing their information and then calling them back from a main office line and providing that line, they're more susceptible to answer that phone call whenever you try and get a hold of that client. So let's take a look at, I'm going to stop sharing this presentation here. And, and Brandon, I know that, you know, like in Law Ruler, for example, and again, most of what we're talking about here today is, is not specific to one particular CRM tool. Yes, Law Ruler provides the best legal CRM out there, we feel, obviously. But any good system should be able to do these things that we're going to describe. We think, obviously, Law Ruler does them incredibly well. Um, but this is a, a generally, um, you know, the information you're going to get here is, is agnostic. So I'm going to stop sharing here. And, and Brandon, if you want to share your screen and, and just kind of show as an example in Law Ruler, like, uh, how a workflow could look. Because workflows are just really all about when A happens, then we want B to happen, um, you know, or, or if A happens, 
depending on what A is, it could branch out and then either you do B or you do C. And it, it's also really about, in some ways, it's project management, right? You have milestones and tasks. And if, if a milestone is reached, then you create new tasks and so on. So um, I'm just gonna stop sharing here. So if you want to um, go ahead and share your screen. Yeah, I can see it there. So right. tell us what yeah. we're looking at here. Yeah, we can have <clears throat> different cu uh, custom milestones and tasks dedicated to each individual type of case. Uh, the importance of this is not everything is going to be having the same flow. So you want to be able to customize it to your specific needs. Um, for instance, if we have dog bite right here, I have, as you can see, 12 tasks uh, lined up in order to get this complete from initial investigation all the way down to the finished settlement, right? So here we can set up as many milestones as we see fit. Basically, it goes off of your individual firm, how they have it right. set from start to finish. And then what you're going to do is you're going to set individual tasks for each milestone. Once you're finished with the last task, you're going to be setting up to go to the next milestone all the way until it's completed. For instance, so these tasks initial investigation, when they first come in, you're going to create an SOL date. You're going to gather their intake details. You're going to confirm the SOL date. You're going to order police reports, open a claim with the insurance company, and then send out letters. So you have designated tasks as well as subtasks to help complete this milestone. I think that's the key. And, and thank you for sharing and showing us that how, and I, I think obviously you, you can see with law really, you could set up as many different workflows as are necessary, depending on the type of law that you practice and so on. Um, and, and I think that's the, the real key is I, I'm the type of guy um, that, and I'm going to share my screen again here, uh, Brandon, yep. if, if I can, if it takes me, some task usually takes me say an hour, I will spend two hours figuring out how to do it in one minute the next time. Right. And so that's sort of what this is all about with, with workflows and what you set up ahead of time is think about everything that you have to do when you work with intake and a client and those various tasks and milestones that you saw from Brandon set up, create it once. And yes, it might be, take the time up front to do that ahead of time. Then it just becomes boom, boom, boom. The next time you have that same type of work coming in, a dog bite, uh, as the example was that, that Brandon showed, um, you know, when, when somebody inquires. So these type of intake workflows, um, once you get them set up and once you get them running the way you know you want them to run, um, will absolutely save you so much time because you don't have to think about what do I have to do next? It's right there and it just presents to you the tasks. And I, I think it's easy to see the benefits of this, um, right? I mean, this makes for an incredibly efficient system because A, as I look up at the top, you know, there you're not going to be procrastinating. You, a lot of this goes out automatically. You can be sending things, and we'll show this in just a little bit. You can show, you can send things to your prospective clients um, via email or via text um, without you having to actually be the one necessarily pushes the button. It just sort of happens based on their behavior. Um, when there's documents that need to be signed, again, efficiently and quickly getting them to your, your prospect, you're gonna be showing that trust. They can see like, wow, it, this feels like I'm their only client they, they've ever worked with before. And you want them to feel like that. You want them to feel like you, they are your only client and you are only thinking of them 24 seven. And the way you can do that is through these, these workflows and automating them so that they will just run like clockwork as you start understanding this particular type of prospect has this particular type of case that um, we might be working on. Okay, let's uh, move on to our, our, our next pillar. Okay, we're gonna talk about creating customized online intake forms and what you do with those forms. Um, and again, Brandon, I think I'll, I'll ask you in just a second here to, to share, and you could give an, a, show an example of what a customized intake form is. Um, and, and let's, why would a, a, a law firm want to have a, a customized intake form? Let's just start there, I guess. And Brandon, I'll, I'll ask you that question. Um, what's the benefit here of that? 
The benefit is to gain the information from the client. You know, you're going to, you want to know the details of the situation. You want to know, you know, their personal information for records. Um, and then you also want to be able to qualify or dequalify the customer based off of your answers. So you can have conditional logic set based off of specific answers to show specific other questions related to their answer. And then if it lines up with something that goes against your firm, you're able to then say, hey, you are no longer uh, available uh, for to be a client or, hey, you know, we're able to take you on as a client. Let's move forward to the next step. So let's let's show that, like again in, in Law Ruler, um, how you would um, how you would how a customized intake form would 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 look like what it would look like. We'll talk yeah. in a minute about how you would share that, in a, uh, perhaps. But I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing again. If you want to show your screen here, um, I think this is fascinating, especially the conditional logic um, information that that you referred to. Yeah. So here we have the the general case questions for this specific intake for a dog bite, we're able to see the screen, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I can see it. Perfect. So yeah, we have conditional logic set up to where did the police respond to the scene? Yes. So we're going to have, I apologize. Yeah. It looks like it, this one. Oh, we had it set up. I apologize. We had this one set up on auto accident. Yeah, I believe you're, yeah, auto accident, yep. So perfect. So normally this blue over here really doesn't respond based on this answer. So did the paramedics respond to the scene? Yes, they're gonna please rec uh, request ambulance records. No, it is not gonna uh, show anything and it's just gonna have you move on to the next question. So, so this is a general qualifier for any type of uh, any type of case form, you know, whether you need specific information from that client or if that client provides information that you know is not going to be uh, a, qualify, a qualifying client for your firm. So this is super interesting about how you acquire, you know, have people do you, in, in your like kind of best practices, would be this would this be the type of form that you as a law firm or an, an intake person, a business development person, whoever for a law firm, um, they would get the answers from the pr prospect over the phone and just fill it in themselves right here? Or would it be best to, to send this form to them to have them complete? Like what, what's the recommendation there? My personal recommendation would always be having the client fill this out because it reduces the risk of error. Um, um, sure. And it also, you know, puts the, it puts the, the, the leniency on, on the client itself. It, it takes it off of you. Um, but you know there are some firms out there that do prefer to have their client intake staff handle all of that. So that's why we have that capabilities of you being able to fill it out as well as the client. You can email this to the client, you can text this to the client and it's mappable. So anytime it comes back in, if you spelt in the name wrong and they're able to fix that, you know, it'll update in their system. Mm. Excellent. I like the this what you just described earlier about how, yeah, hey, if there's a firm that has a whole kind of intake department who will take this information over the phone versus a firm that maybe they don't have the resources to do that, so they send it out to the client themselves, it gets back to that meet them where they're at, right? Meet people where they're at. And, and kind of meet them where you're at too, from a, from a resource point of view. Either way, you're getting this information um, quickly, updating it. And then let's, I'm, I'm gonna take back my, my screen here again. Um, so when we talk about the, um, you know, taking in this information, I think it's important to note a lot of law firms will get this information and use it like a CRM, but it's not necessarily the attorneys themselves taking this information, right? Nope, oh, did we lose your Brandon? I apologize, my headset cut out. Do you mind repeating the question? Yeah, sorry. I, I just said, uh, um, you know, while this information gets, you know, you're taking it in on a, on a form like you just showed in your CRM like law ruler, but by definition, it really shouldn't stay there because it's not being, um, this information is not being acquired by generally an actual attorney, right? 
this is is primarily getting uh, taken from the the client itself. So it, it's it's meant to reduce double data entry, so that you're not inputting information and it's the incorrect information. Right, and I guess where where I'm going with this is because the attorney themselves is not the one gathering this information, or you know, this needs to integrate with other tools that your law firm uses. Um, it is important that whatever client intake process you're using, it should have a robust amount of integrations available so that this data, this important data, this is beyond obviously just, you know, first name, last name, email, phone number. This is important information to help actually work the matter, to work the case. So pushing this over into practice management software, um, all the other time and billing systems, um, you know, all the other tools that you have, your accounting, maybe your QuickBooks, all that sort of stuff. Being able to have integrations with all of those tools is, is important. Um, it, and it, if you're in the process of evaluating, hey, should I be using a legal CRM? Um, is this something that can really help my processes and my systems? Um, then that should be part of the evaluation process is like, yeah, it should integrate because getting up to that, what you see at the top of the screen, avoiding the double data entry. Every, like that should be like stapled across, maybe not stapled, painted, put on the front of everyone's forehead who has anything to do with running a business, not even just a law firm, a business is avoiding data being entered twice. Never ever should you have to do that um, on today's technology, whether it's because you have a all-in-one system who do does everything for you or whether you have deep integrations that move data seamlessly and, and effortlessly from one system to the next as the, the, the case itself rolls through its natural process of, hey, we've marketed to this person. They are now a prospect. They are now somebody who we are onboarding uh, as a client. We're now moving them into actual matter management where we're working on the case. Now we're moving them into the accounting process where we need to create an invoice for them. Now we're asking them to pay us by sending them information on how they pay us. All the pertinent information should roll from one system to the next as they go through that life cycle of working with a law firm. I, I agree wholeheartedly. And on top of that, you had mentioned something earlier about, you know, taking this beyond um, just the intake staff to the attorneys and, and whatnot, and, and also having integrations. It, it's, it's so important because there are going to be times where you have specific needs for case management. And the great thing about the, the law ruler side is, is that everything in our, our, our system is reportable. You can have custom reports built off of whatever you wish um, and then prints it out to a Excel sheet which then can be used to up, upload to any other case software that you choose to wish uh, use for, uh, from. Yeah, okay, I like this. Um, let's move forward here to our, our last pillar. Okay. Creating that simple and seamless process. And we've already kind of touched on, on some of this to a degree of we want to make this simple. We want to make sure that what we present to the client who may be in an agitated state um, or in a, you know, in, a, in a nervous place, let's say, make it easy and simple for them to give the information that, that you really need to evaluate them. Um, and part of that is you know, self-qualification really goes back to those forms that you, you just showed. Um, the ability to give them that form to it's self-selection. You can easily, without having to do a lot of work yourself, learn if this client is right for your type of law and your law firm. Um, if not, you can refer them to others that you know are and, and move along with the rest of your life um, and, and you know, make sure you have that good, strong referral network. L let's talk about this concept of click to conversion. What does that, what does that actually mean um, in the kind of CRM client intake world, Brandon? Well, click, you, you think of that as, as when a client is searching up firms, you know, you're, you're clicking through Google ads, you're clicking through, through different firm websites, you know, you want to be able to, to stand out to where you can get a hold of that client as soon as possible. The sooner you can uh, get a hold of that client, the better your chances are uh, to, to retain that client. So you want to have the easiest and simple way to get a hold of them and 
transform them into your client. Not only is it going to be effective for, um, like, like you said before, they're, they're in an agitated state. They're, they you know, don't want to have to deal with anything. You want to make this a simple and e easy process for them to, to go along this journey with. If you can make that simple for them, they're more likely to sign with you. Not only are you going to be able to retain that client, but it's also going to be making you a lot more money. I love that for the whole phrase, click to conversion. It really is the whole, you know, I mentioned life cycle a minute or two ago. It's it's the life cycle specifically around acquiring a new client from they've, they've clicked on something they saw about your law firm to that conversion where they've signed a document for the legal services you're going to provide. You know, that that's a whole life cycle in and of itself. And I, I think it's, you know, seeing how Law Ruler at least is able to, um, how you're able to accomplish that is, is fascinating because, and I'm going to have you share your screen again here, Brandon, and, and, but just seeing how you can, you can even I mean, it, this is like what blows my mind. You can even set up, right, a phone number based on a specific marketing campaign that you have going, right? So you know if somebody calls into that number, you know exactly how they got your number, it, it, whether it's a Google PPC campaign, whether it's a, um, maybe it's a, a, a mail piece that you sent to, to people. Um, maybe it's, it's from an event that you sponsored that had a specific phone number, but any type of marketing work that you do, it's really easy to track the leads that you get from that activity, right? Oh, hundred percent. Because if you're spending all of this money in your marketing, you want to know that you're making a good investment with your money. You don't want to be a person here. At Pro I understand how that, the ROI works, right? A hundred percent. And the best thing about it is that we have the reporting capabilities to show you where your money is going, to show you what ad is going to be the best qualifier for gaining all of these clients. You know so, what I mean? So beyond just, I mean, that's obviously something we is important for the law firm, but that easier click to conversion, making it easy for the communication to the client and for the client, or I should say prospect at this point, because I'm not a client yet, um, making that easy for them. I'm going to, why don't you share your screen and, and show us a little bit about how you can, you know, if somebody were to call, you know, your, you know, a phone number you created, you have a specific, uh, you know, ad campaign phone number, you know, how you can then communicate back with them. Because I think this is a really, um, a really interesting way of making sure that we leverage today's technology to, um, to, to respond to a potential client. So if you want to share your screen and, and kind of show us in Law Ruler again, how we do that. Sure thing. All right. So yeah, you can have up as many lead sources as you wish. You know, you're going to be able to purchase a tracking number um, to put up on that website, or if it's a bus ad, um, these are meant just to track where your leads are coming in from. When they call this specific number, you know, it's going to show up inside of Law Ruler as a lead coming from that specific marketing number. Um, so I believe we have. Why don't you go ahead and call that specific number I that did. we set up? I'm calling a number right now that I was given. Perfect. So as you can see right here, it automatically creates a lead. That prevents any type of, uh, of time wasted for your, your intake staff to have to create a lead, create an account. All of that is, is generated from that intake webinar sample uh, marketing lead. What this is really see, cool. Sorry, let me interrupt here because this is really cool. I mean, especially for somebody my age, the magic of this, right? Where yes. I called and yet there, there was no response. Obviously, you want to make sure that when somebody calls you, you pick up the phone. Um, but this registered me and my phone number, my name, because it's part of my caller ID, even though there was no answer on the other end of the line. It's that quick. I mean, you know, you sent me that phone number um, right when you started sharing your screen to me in the, in the chat here, and boom, here I am. You can see my phone number. That so now everybody has my cell phone number. So feel free to give me a call there. <laughs> you can see I'm in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, and, and so now, what would be the next step as, as part of that easy click to conversion? So yeah, the next step technically is, as you had mentioned, I did not answer your call. So once this call comes in. Uh, it can come into a uh, can't contact status normally comes in under a new lead whenever it comes in under a new lead we have automation set up to 
respond to that client immediately saying, hey, thank you so much for your interest in our law firm. We will be contacting you shortly from this number. And then that lets them know that, hey, this, is, this doesn't really seem like an automated text. This seems like an actual person going to be getting a hold of me. That's so, brilliant. Yeah. I, I love that. I, I love that, you know, the, to cut through the clutter of, you know, if you're like me, very rarely do I answer any cell phone call that I have um, that's from some number I don't recognize. So getting that text message saying, thanks, I'll be giving you a call at this number um, is, I, I think, just genius. Absolutely. And, and like we said before, it's, it's all about a simple and seamless process. It's going to help you save you time. It's going to help you save you money as well. Uh, and it's, it's now something that the industry literally is, is leaning towards. Um, a CRM is, is here for one reason at the end of the day. It's, it's to make you more money. From integrating with every lead source, completing your custom and optimized intake, uh, one-click e-sign to sending them your case management software with a click of a button, everything is meant to save you time on your process and get your intake staff talking and converting more clients. What would happen next here? Like, say, okay, you finally do have a conversation with them. You're on the phone, and as you mentioned earlier, you really would prefer best practices would be to have the the prospect themselves fill out those custom intake forms to self qualify. How would we get them those forms if you're right there on the phone with them? Yeah, so if you're on the phone with them, or if you just got off the phone with them, you set the expectation that hey, we're going to be sending over our intake form. Just do do us a favor, fill that out, and send it back. You have two options. My recommendation always will be sending a text message with this URL because a client nowadays, most, most, most younger people in the younger generations, they're not really paying attention to their email or it gets sent to spam or it's just flooded with a, bun a bunch of spam in their main inbox. Sending them a text message is, is going to be key because no, I've never seen a person just not open a text message. Whenever they open up their phone, the first thing they do is they go and check their text messages. It gives me so, angst if I see my little message on my phone and I have numbers there. You know, like it, I get angst. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I know. So you, you, you have the option of either emailing this, you can send it form, it'll generate a custom email, and you can choose who it's going to deliver from and it, have it preloaded to say, hey, Scott, it fills it out, it personalizes it to that individual client. Um, important intake form, uh, completion required from Law Ruler. This is how the email function is going to look like. Now, like I said, I do prefer the text messages. We would go to your communications tab, and then we would just go to our text messages. And then here we can generate a text message straight to you. And you can even monitor it right here. It shows that it's accepted. It was sent on 1.45 p.m. today, March 31st, 2022. And you can even text that back, and everything is logged inside of Law Ruler. And I just got the text message, yeah, on my phone here. So do me a favor, just go ahead and reply to that. Say, thanks, great. So I'm tapping on, you guys can't see me doing this. Um, I could share my phone, I know. Um, but uh, yeah, let's see, new lead information next. I don't think we actually sent a, a form that I can I can complete right now, but I understand where you're going with this of, uh, um, filling out the form right there on your mobile device being again it's all about that meet them where they're at so i could be in line in chipotle waiting you know for my food and get this form and, and fill it out yeah well no th this form right now because we keep in mind we didn't choose a specific case type right then and there um uh -huh. but this is just sending a a, a, a pre uh, uh clickable link right so based off of the specific case type it's going to generate a link dedicated to that intake form. So my my question to you was just to reply to it, to show that this- Oh, has reply to the email, oh, reply to the text, sorry. Yeah, my, this, my. this shows that this has two-way functionality of text messaging so that you can keep up a, a conversation with your client. I, I'm sorry. Most, no, you're okay. Most people nowadays, they they don't really like talking on the phone. You know, they enjoy yeah. a good text message. So this I, just a, I, just that sent text message. I just sent a text message back saying, yep, got it. And as you can see, you go back to the communications. Let me just choose a, a specific case type.
Yeah, that's right. I understand that like the, the whole concept of making sure that we can, you can do the texting back and forth. Yeah. We're just kind of doing this on the fly. So um, being able to kind of uh, make sure that you can you can do the texting back and forth from your computer. So you as a law firm, you're not having to um, do this from your actual phone. Then the, the last part of all this, so the intake forms have been created, the text messages. I apologize. Been... I apologize. Here, here it is. We got it. Oh, here it is. Yep. Got it. Okay. Yeah, look at that. Right. Yep. Um, would be document signing, right? Again, meeting people where they're at. Um, as we all know, e-signature is a perfectly acceptable way to legally um, have documents signed. Generally, for the vast majority of documents, especially the intake, you don't need a wet signature. So how, you know, again, same methodology here, um, if you need to sign a, an actual uh, document. Correct, yes. And, and keep in mind, all of your documents, are they stay inside of your portal. So anytime that you want to get in touch with a customer and sign that customer, you can go to your e-signs templates, and then you have your retainer agreements already pre-set up um, by our law rule team, or you can, we show you how to set them up yourselves. Um, you have the option of sending it, or you, if you're in front of the client right then and there, you can click to sign now. If they're physically um, in the office, they could, okay. Correct. Yep. Yeah. So here we can see that we can just, we're going to, we're going to choose to either email this and then you also have the capabilities of texting. Texting is, like I said, my favorite option in this. So you can choose to either choose not to text or you can just delete the email, whichever you choose, uh, whichever method you choose to send it. And then we would then send e-sign. And that's gonna automatically say success, send for e-sign. And then it'll automatically update your lead from new lead when we refresh the screen to send e-sign. Um, now, nice. keep in mind, keep in mind, Scott. I did not email this to you, um, right, right. but when the, when whenever you email it out to a client and they have then accepted it and then sent it back, this will automatically update to e-sign status, um, signed e-sign. Oh, perfect. So again, automatically, you don't have to do it. It's automated, automated, automated. <laughs> exactly. No, this is this is I think the whole point of that you, you've shown here is how it is. This is the the click to conversion can happen with a client. I mean, the whole thing could have happened while I was literally in line in Chipotle, you know, but with the text, um, you know, convenience there, which is a bit unique for law ruler um, as a as a feature that other legal CRMs you may be evaluating don't have these built in text messaging capabilities, right? Correct. Yeah, that's it. Definitely sets us apart from, from the rest, in my opinion. Um, you know, it's 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 bringing bringing you out from the stone ages of having to just mail out a packet to somebody in order to to try and get them to sign. You're you're running the risk of the packet not getting delivered. You're running the risk of the client talking to other firms in the meantime while they wait for this packet to come out. This right, is an instant right. and seamless process. Hey, I'm sending you this document. Sign it and send it back. Honest to God, if if I was working, if I was looking to engage with a law firm, they said we're going to mail you a packet of documents to sign and send back. I would, I would think twice of like, seriously, this this is how this law firm like these guys are not up to speed with today's like world. So I don't know if I can even trust them to work on my matter if you're still using a process like that. Um, exactly. Keep yeah. in mind, others, other companies, they they have texting capabilities too. But the problem with it is, is that it, they're using third party software. So they're using third party software. They have to log into a whole nother app, and sure. that's unreliable in itself. Whereas right. we it's have like everything. That couple entry thing we talked about earlier, right? Exactly. Um, you get that information from your CRM to whatever that text. Yeah, because there's plenty of like, you know, web based text messaging tools that that you can use out there in the market. But having it built into your CRM right there and then, um, right next to your intake forms, right next to the documents you need them to sign um, is um, a, a really cool thing that, again, will we'll speed things up. Um, so in the sake of, sake of time here, we have just a couple minutes left. Remember, we we to wrap it up, we want to make sure that whatever you're using for your CRM, um, integrates with the programs that you already use. Uh, Law Ruler, as many others do, integrates with literally thousands of different vendors um, that provide legal technology services. Um, so th that's not really an issue when it comes to, to Law Ruler. Um, it, will it integrate? So let's take another minute or two questions. 
um, you know, for those of you that that are, um, you know, evaluating, thinking about CRM, again, that Q&A button is, um, uh, should be at the bottom of your screen. I shouldn't say button, maybe it's an icon, um, is to ask questions that you may have. I always, this was the, the teacher in me in that, that long pause that you really should put when you ask the question, do you have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Too many times have you ever been in meetings, people will say like, so are there any questions? Okay, good, let's move on. And you don't get the opportunity to actually think of a question. So um, I always used to have these pregnant pauses as I stood in front of my class. Any questions? And you just let that breathe. <laughs> All right, I don't see any questions that have come in. So, so Brandon, that means either we've done an, an incredible job explaining all this or we've put everybody to sleep. One of the two. <laughs> I'm, gonna, um, I'm gonna go with the, the other one. So as we wrap up here, um, I do wanna ask another poll question. Um, and, and that is just simply, you know, do you, do you wanna learn more about how legal CRM can help your firm and, and help your client intake process. I see we got a yes for one. Yeah, excellent. Well, we'll make sure that everyone who um, answers yes here, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we can do a, a, a reach out to you, one-on-one -on -one type of interaction. Um, Cause really, I mean, Brian, let's be honest, we just sort of scratched the surface here, didn't we? We, we haven't even begun to scratch the surface in my opinion. <laughs> Uh, just based off of the text messaging feature, e-sign docs, and not, we haven't even mentioned the, the soft phone dialer that we have built in, there's endless possibilities that you can do with the software. So it, it is, um, I think the whole main point is getting back to how to streamline your client intake process, the whole title of this webinar. It's all about making sure that you set up ahead of time the automated workflows that will allow the tasks and milestones um, in all the work that it takes, that life cycle of moving somebody from a prospect to an actual client you're doing work on, moving them through that process in as automated yet personalized fashion as possible. And you can do that with, with legal CRM. And then it, it, you want to make that whole intake process um, as seamless as possible, as easy as possible, as wherever those people happen to be, so they can qualify themselves if they'd be a good fit for your law firm. And they can do that in a way that will build trust with you right out of the box as you create that great first impression of, this is the firm that knows what they're doing, is attentive to my needs, responds to me immediately, and makes me feel like, like I mentioned earlier, like I'm the only client they have. And, and that's where these tools can really help you and a firm, as a firm, shine. So without any other questions that have come in, I do want to thank, we, we have about five minutes left here. I, I will give the gift of, of five minutes of time. So thank you, everybody. Brandon, thank you. This has been really enjoyable. I've had fun. Absolutely. Likewise. I appreciate you having me on. Thanks, everybody, for attending our webinar, and I will be sending out, uh, you'll be getting an email with a recording, uh, with a link to a recording of this, so you can uh, watch it at your leisure, and we hope everyone has a great rest of their day, a great rest of their week, and a great weekend. So thanks, everybody.